All right, um, here we go. Welcome to another Accessibility Hour session. Today, my guest for today is Hilary Cluet, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. So, Hilary, please tell us. Oh. Who okay, you sure, and, sure. Yeah, okay. What you do and why you're here. Okay, well, I'm here, first of all, so that you can kick my butt in accessibility <laughs> and break my site. Basically, that's okay. why I'm here. We because, are in the right place. Yeah, am I in the right place? <laughs> okay, good. Good. So uh, basically, I've been uh, self employed um, for ever. And, you know, that means kind of being that solopreneur where you're doing the website, you're doing the marketing, you're doing the SEO, like all of those things together. And I used to use WordPress and I actually uh, had my brother as my web developer on WordPress. And before WordPress, I used Squarespace. <sighs> before that, there was like other ones too. And I wasn't really um, thrilled with all of the different things. And I, I've made so many different types of sites and, you know, and I just, it all came down to uh, two years ago, you know, everyone became housebound. But before that I was already housebound because I have like a bunch of allergies and just stuff that kind of keeps me away from a lot of mass public. <laughs> I just, I just throw up. I just throw up and I get sick. Right. So I had to figure out a way to stay home and, you know, make that sustainable uh, for myself as a self-employed person. So part of that was finding um, a platform and LinkedIn has been great, you know, but now I want to create like a page where there's, there's some stuff happening and some interactions. And so I didn't want to go back to WordPress and all that. And one of my clients from last year, she told me about Floxies, which is where you and I met. Right. And so this is, that's like starting in January, that's kind of where all this happened. And I, I come from a background of like a uh, content strategy. So I'm always word first, which is why I use the bubble method. And like, it's always word first article writing, like just words. Uh, and so I never uh, had all the tools to do all the other design stuff. And now I do, I have an iPad, I have, you know, a nice monitor, I can see a Figma file before I could only see like a little block of it. So it was really hard to kind of, even just from that accessibility standpoint, from like a technology accessibility standpoint, like a budget thing, I was really limited. So now I feel like I'm like, ready to play in the big leagues. I've got like, you know, the web flow experts behind me. I'm the crew. <laughs> the crew. I feel like, I feel like, okay, like I'm ready to go. And this, this is like my geeky side. Um, you know, I love spreadsheets. I love developing. I love all that stuff, but I prefer to talk to UX designers and I prefer to help people communicate. And so that's, that's where I'm focusing. And that's why I started the UX vocab club and everything's just kind of organically happening and I'm letting it, I'm, I'm going with the flow, right? I'm just going with the flow. So, I mean, that's why I'm here now. I've spent the past, I sent you that CMS <laughs> menu mm -hmm. website. You were like, why did you choose this? <laughs> uh, I didn't say anything, <laughs> but I think you read my mind. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, because I, I like the simplicity of it. And I like the idea of CMS. And even yesterday, like that cool storytelling with CMS, you know, that's something that I have a lot of flows for, like, but I, I had to just simplify and simplify and simplify. And I was like, what is the freaking point of this page? Like, what am I doing here? What's been successful? So as you'll see today, it's just one section of the page, but I would, I would prefer to test it and test a button and like see how a tab kind of navigates through a web flow, you know, and then duplicate something that works instead of, at the very end of a finished project, focusing on accessibility for like four seconds. Like I, I want this to be like an ongoing thing. You know what I mean? Cause I don't think like, do you find that that's a ongoing discussion as part of the design process ever? 
Accessibility actually starts with uh, with the content. So with content, okay. yes. So when you start uh, thinking of how to organize content, mm -hmm. uh, so it is this is the the stage prior to um, to the design. That's yeah. where that's where you can start uh, making some accessibility considerations. Yeah. So so yeah, that's why I'm really excited for it's that session today. Yeah, because it's interesting you say that and I didn't share with you and I totally will now that you've mentioned this because yesterday when from the Figma to Webflow, it was still, I was like, no, something is missing. So I actually ended up creating a Google document in the hierarchy. And that's when I started moving things around and really shortening it up. I had Grammarly on there, shortening it up, you know? And it was so interesting. I was like, that's so funny that I had to go back to a word structure with H1, H2, H3, you know, bullets just to tidy it up in my head so that then I will be able to eventually put that content onto Webflow. So I'm going to share that with you quickly, just in case yeah. if you want to, so, because yeah, it has more <laughs> information. So I don't know how this works. But let's, I, yeah, let's um, start. So, um, so this is your stage today. So you oh, can start sorry. sharing, you can start sharing your screen and share whatever you want, whatever part of your project. So you can share, you can start from the document, how you've organized the content or from Figma or Webflow, however you want it. Um, oh, that's to. interesting. Okay, let's let's start. Okay, I'm gonna get out of Discord. <laughs> okay. No distractions right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so get out of this. Mm -hmm. So then I have, I'm gonna share my Figma file, right? And then that's because okay. that's where I started basically because it was from your Figma file. Okay. And I cloned <laughs> it. I cloned it. I love it. It gave me a really nice. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to share all this screen real estate and still see you. Are you having troubles sharing the screen? Share screen. Um, I think you should, you should Figma. be able. Figma. Yeah. Okay. Share. Okay. Perfect. You can see this, right? My Figma. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I cloned your Figma file and then I like, I just, I, I, like, I was like, where is it? Like, I couldn't find it. Like I saw like your title page and it's like, but where is it? And then I realized like, oh, that's, that's the best way to learn when you find yeah. yourself struggling yeah and and so on desktop you can go to the other pages but I was opening it up on my iPad and you're like stuck on the cover page I'm pretty sure when you go on an iPad I was trying to like mash oh, okay. the buttons and nothing was working so I could see why I didn't realize but at the same time it's quite obvious so I had the I I, I wanted to do like a title page too because it's like oh that's so cute so I'm you know I loved uh, this idea of the components. So once I figured out what a component was and how you get the components, you know, from one of your one of your tabs, I just started making like everything into um, components, and it's pretty amazing. So I I I can't, which, which makes it more efficient, right? When you when you start using components. Oh my God. It's my jewelry training background. You know, you never just like went to make one jump ring at a time. It's like, no, you made a thousand jump rings so that you could have a necklace, you know, and before that you got to make the wire. So it's like that activates all of, you, you know, I actually had so much fun building this out over two weeks. I was like, I feel like I'm building again. Like da, da, da. it was fun. So, I mean, it's a lot. And like the naming conventions, you know, I was using camel case, but actually in Webflow, it's all dashes. So that was something interesting because I noticed in your, um, in your clone, it's all dashes. Like all of your titles are dashed. And for me, that like, that distracts me. But then when I went to Webflow to build it, I was like, oh, that's where the dash came in. Okay. So it's interesting to like see yeah, like, so both. You, so you don't, you don't have to switch from a naming convention from one tool to the other. Yeah. That, is, that, that was the idea of that, uh, of that yeah. temp template, actually, to help yeah. you to facilitate the, from the, the Figma to Webflow process. Yeah, but, it is so. super helpful because it uses the REMS and everything. So basically, I made all of I made everything into components. 
Okay. And I named them all with, if I, if I put them in, those are vector images from Google, but like, if I named them, I put them in REMS. So like a two by two REM, you know, 32 by 32, three by three. So like, I've been converting everything. I've been dividing everything, all pixels. I'm like divide by 16. Like I need the REM. What's that? And then that, I think all of that hard work made it really like easy to go into Webflow because you know it always starts out in pixels and you got to like double click and mash it a few times to like get it to actually change to rem and then you can add the rem but then you know it was all it, it, it didn't pretty, break yeah. this morning I yeah. was like, and then it's it, it's pretty intuitive so it maybe you struggle a little a, li a little at the beginning like but the then yeah it comes like the to teensiest amount of struggling just for like oh yeah, that initial pain that we all need to endure to learn everything. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was, I think it's totally worth it. So uh, this was your, the text one. So uh, that was something I didn't even consider was text until the Webflow University video uh, two days ago. And they were like, oh, load your fonts. And I was like, load my fonts, oh my God. And then we had that Floxy's font discussion with, um, Picha, I'm pretty sure, right? And so I was like, okay, I don't need too many fonts, maybe two fonts, you know? So I went and I like looked them up and then I figured out which ones I want for what. And then I just named them because once you load them in Webflow, which I just did this morning, you know, it's pretty easy to like find them and grab them. And then I, so I tried to make everything so I could like reference it, you know? I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I like Poppins. Yeah, I, I like, uh, I don't, like the, the fonts aren't here in Figma, they're only on the Webflow, but what I like about both of them is it's actually the A. I've, I, I, I hate A's with the, the hook. Mm -hmm. I never write an A like that in real life. And I like distinctly remember the day that I decided there's no freaking way that I'm writing an A like that. Like, what a waste of time like how is that like I just I, I remember like being really like argumentative with my printing teacher in grade four <laughs> you can like you know how this is not happening. Happening. <laughs> yeah. so poppins and quicksand both don't have that ridiculous hook on the a it's just an a it's just a beautiful a so that's actually why I chose them that's pretty much the only reason why I chose them. <laughs> so in, in your, in your opinion is Poppins and Quicksand. I mean, we're not looking at those on the screen right now, but are those accessible fonts or is my like reasoning there <laughs> totally ridiculous? There is. Yeah. You need, you need to ensure that a font is, the font is um, readable and legible. You need to be able to uh, distinguish the letters. Yep. And also you need to be able to um, read a text. Yeah, to, to easily read a, a paragraph with that font. Yeah, yeah. So like all the curly stuff and like, it's not, it, you know, it's not like some handwritten yeah. beautiful um, scroll. It's yeah. like- So it, this these, it. These, yeah, these two conditions need okay. to be true all the time. So okay. readability and legibility. Readability and legibility. Okay, cool. Well, then I think Poppins and Quicksand are great and they don't make me want to like rage. Okay, what about this pink here, Hillary? <laughs> okay, so I'm obsessed with the pink. I love the pink. But when I looked at the pink on the blue, because basically that's that's the style. If I go to my assets, this is all the stuff that I've kind of been using on LinkedIn. And, you know, for my group event and the newsletter, my vocab club. So uh, I also checked it out on. Okay. Did you do the test? The color? I contest? did. Check it Check. out. Okay. Okay. Look, I did the three so, or four. So I did it from my, um, oh my God, scrolling in slowly. Okay. Check it out. So this is Tritinopia. So in Tritinopia, there's actually still a contrast between the, the background and it, and it just turns kind of orange, which I thought was kind of cool. It's like, okay, cool. Uh, and then, wait, how do I go over? What is this test? This is a colorblind web filter page. Okay, this is one possible test that we can do, but um, the, first, the first 
check that you need to do is the color contrast checker so oh color contrast yes yeah, yeah. so oh my yeah, god you need to check the contrast between two colors between the background color and the font color okay so between this pink and that yeah. blue basically as we were as we were talking about the the fonts uh previously yeah. so how this do is I... not this is not really a very accessible font because it is at least for me it's a bit hard to distinguish one letter from the other yep yeah, these these are just um, but these are just assets. They're not even the uh, like in the actual web post, like the website. It's it's text. It's not it's not this image because I agree these images are they were drafts. So yeah, it's what yeah. what is unaccessible about it though? Is it is it because it's really chunky? It's too chunky, right? It is a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and remember that you need to apply accessibility principles also when you create assets, also when you use text yeah. uh, as part of an image. It's the same principle, the same rules that apply. Yeah. So yeah. 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 That that would make it, it is always good practice. So if um, if you're using a text as part of the of the image to also um, use the same text. Um, not outside of the image however you also at that point you also need to think is it really necessary to have an image with that text or an image yeah exactly like, this is just like the enjoy the newsletter that's for the banner on uh, linkedin so it's like a super weird you know that has like a really weird aspect ratio that only goes you know so like that's where those those came from and it got even chunkier with a resize you know what I mean? Like, you know how it's, yeah. So it's, it's quick. Those are quick and easy fixes I feel, but I think this contrast, this contrast checker, that's how do I, where do I check so, that? How do I know how to do Okay. That? So you can go to, go to Google and just type color compress checker and there are plenty of them. Yeah, there it is. Okay. This one, WebAIM? Yeah, that, yeah, that would be the best one. That is from WebAIM, which is the web. Oh, and I put in the colors. Yeah. So this is the foreground color and the background color. So make sure to use. Okay, so one. so foreground. Okay, well, let me go to my color component. The, the pink. Uh, da, 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 where are you? So let's take the hex code of the pink color that you're using. Da, 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 da. There it is. And then the background is D E F nine F F. Mm -hmm. Please work. Da, da, da. Do you think it's not going to work? I Wait, pass fail. What's normal text. Okay, I cannot. I can. I cannot see your screen. I can. Oh I can shoot! See the oh, file, oh, you can't see the other one. Oh my god. You need to you need to add the tab to this window. Oh yeah. Just like you did previously. Like that? Yeah. You see it now? Yeah. Okay. So okay, so I did it. So I got the fail on this one, but do you think if I just made it a bowl? Okay, let's yeah, let's take a look at this um at the at this tool. So uh when it comes to normal text, Mm -hmm. um this is of, of course this test failed. If you use large text. Yeah, uh, these would pass. Uh, yeah. This is as the uh, VCAG uh, double A. <gasps> but it, the it failed A. the triple A. Yeah, but it uh, it is important that you pass the the the, the, the double A, oh. also from a legal perspective. Why did it fail the it, triple A? The triple A has it um, requires you to um, to comply to a higher contrast level. So there are two contrast levels that are considered considered acceptable. But from a legal perspective, um, especially, especially institutions are required to comply to the double A contrast. Yeah. Um, so if you, uh, there's also, and then there are, there's uh, other content and resources that explain what what actually it means with large text. But typically, we, if you, for headings and uh, bold text. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you use it for a normal. Which I got. I got quicksand yeah. 700 and quicksand 500 are all the headings. So they're, it's, they're yeah. quite bold, but they're not as compressed as the text that I was using on LinkedIn. So this, this tool also helps you to pick 
uh, an accessible color. Can you see where there are the foreground and background colors? Yeah. Yeah. There's these triangles. Yeah. You you can yeah you can change the lightness. Feel feel. <laughs> I think you should play around with the foreground here. That's interesting. Oh, where'd my blue go though? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we need to copy paste again. Okay. Uh, so. Oh wait. I was just moving this. Oh, oh, fail. Okay, so wait, it got worse. Oh, because there's no contrast between it. Okay, I'm you're, understanding. You're changing the light. <laughs> you're, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's never gonna pass that. This so is the background on. and you are reducing the lightness. This is the foreground and would- And I'm- You need, you need to increase- the lightness, I need to- You're increase. okay. Oh, so you need to reduce oh, the okay. lightness. Okay. This is the, the text color. <sighs> so, okay, so wait, I passed, but now it's some like yeah. plum. So then it's, the lightness needs to be like on opposite sides of the slider for the background and the foreground color in your Okay, case. that makes sense. To increase the contrast. Oh, okay, so this is the point I fail. Darn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you might not like this pink, this dark pink. I don't pink. like this pink at all. Yeah, I know, I can see. <laughs> but, <laughs> but look, um, yeah. But it's, if it's just for buttons and it's just for on top of the blue, I mean, maybe I can, you know, find a happy medium, but use the bright pink on top of the white, right? Because does the bright pink go on top of white? Is that fine? Yeah, yeah, we can check it. Oh my God. Why don't you check it now? I'm, we're going to check Here, it. Here, the background, uh, set the background color as white. So all Fs. And now you can play around, yeah, with that slider. <gasps> Tails. Ah, okay, but wait, if it was bold, like bold text. Okay, oh, the darker, it's darker. Yeah, it has to be darker. bold and large text, that oh, it works. So if you're using it in your asset, yeah, but consider also that if, if, if that's an image, then then may, you cannot control its size when you open, when you open it on, on, on your mobile phone. So it might still look small. If it's a heading, normal text, then yeah, you can control its size um, with especially with grams. Um, but if it's part of an of um, of an asset, yeah, it's a bit tricky. Totally, except if you've got complete control over the assets and yeah, it's right and here, especially which I do. Like <laughs> <laughs> so I just have to suck it up and not be such a oh, I like pink. It's like no, okay, I like cherry. Cherry's fine. Cherry's a nice color. Fine. You know, it's nice though that I didn't like fall in love with the pink website and now I can just change the color from my H1s and my titles on Webflow to this color so that even on have, the white, you, it's you, okay. You can, you can have pink websites and pink assets. You just need to be a lot more careful and spend a lot more time making sure that it is accessible. True. Your, okay, your yeah, choice. That background, that background color then matters, right? Because it's like maybe pink on white isn't so good, but like a pink on something. You, yeah, you need to use the compass checker and make sure that you're using the right yeah, shade. Save this. Save. <laughs> well, the, the right there, shades. Yeah. Oh. There, there are wow. many of these tools. Yeah, you can. This is. Wow. This is only the first one. Only the first one. Yeah, this yeah. is why I'm here. Exactly. Okay. So get rid of my my dreams. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just let me just um you can still wait, so use what do it. I do? I do all and then you can still use it for decorations. Yeah, I guess so. But you need to be really mindful when really mindful. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Okay. So the purpose. So when you're choosing your color, uh your color palette, think of the color of the text that is nice and then decorations like now that i'm looking at the comparison can you see the comparison now this like yeah. hot pink like i i do actually like the cherry i think i'm just like a hot pink kind of girl but like i so, i would prefer to wear cherry lipstick you know what i mean so, so maybe i have to yeah you already change your mindset, not just your mind about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, because I really like the blue. You're drinking, right? That's not. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's coffee. It's coffee. But I hope you have a beer. (laughs) Why do you? (laughs) Why do you hope for that? (laughs) Because it's nice accessibility, like a chill accessibility hour. Because I, I I think for me, this this blue is more important than the pink. I don't know why. I just like I find that blue really calming as a background (laughs) color. So if I can use that blue with this cherry, like. I think that's funny that that's that's more important to me. It's interesting these priorities. Accessibility makes you prioritize yeah. and be mindful and open minded. Oh my yeah. god! So imagine if when UI designers choose a color palette, and you are designers that have no accessibility um, uh, training or any yeah. or any information about the topic, and then yeah. and then there is an accessibility audit from external teams or from inter- from um, an internal initiative of the company yeah. and what a big mess that yeah. is bam first yeah. second check this was the second thing you recommended and i failed immediately <laughs> <laughs> well actually you learned you didn't fail. i learned yeah i learned i learned but it definitely says pass and then fail on this so <laughs> It's good. That's the whole point, right? So that's pivot. that's really interesting. So you're ready to pivot. Yeah, exactly. Always, always. I learned that in basketball. If you don't pivot, you fall on your butt. So <laughs> well, that is basically what will happen if you don't follow accessibility principles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will make this as the title of the video. Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, so then what's next? So we did the contrast checker. I've now updated at least that. Oh, oh, then you know what? Let's, okay, what would you do next? Because I, I was going to say, I can make that change immediately right now on Webflow. And Look, then I can uh, show you the Webflow. Okay, so what do you have here in Figma? The color palette and? Oh, uh, I, I had like. Text my text and headings, right? Yeah, so, so I okay. had a lo-fi. This is what I eventually wanted to make it look like but now that um this pink is out uh this has to be that cherry color um there's a way that how you can uh change them all together so uh, select all the wireframe uh, the whole wireframe this the one yeah then oh, go to here. selection colors yeah and change it from here yeah, magic. Magic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait, I'm going to do it on this one too. Do, um, I think you can also, you can use a lighter pink here and you'll still be compliant. Yeah, I can play with this yeah. a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. If you go to the contrast checker and increase the lightness a bit until you comply to the double A, um, B cat, yeah. Mm. It'll make a big difference even, even if you use just this one. It's not. So I know, I hate seeing the fail there. Okay. <laughs> Let's just see. AC. AC. Okay, so I select the whole thing, I go over here. I press that. I go like that. I don't mind it. I mean, yeah. if as soon as I change all the LinkedIn stuff, I'll never know and I'll never think about it again. So, and I pump out so much stuff that it will be lost in history in uh, you know the next three months. So I'm not too worried. <laughs> I love I love this way of thinking. Right. So okay. okay. Cool. So what am I what am I looking at? So this was my mock-up. So I was like, oh, what do I want to do? And I was thinking, you know, I, I want to make sure that everything's actually really good for a, a phone, like more mobile, because I noticed a lot of people on like LinkedIn when they're visiting even the site, like it's on their on their phone. So uh, I wanted to think about desktop and Android at the same time. I also wanted it to be like a menu, which is why I sent you that menu in the beginning and like eventually hook up some CMS stuff. But at the end of the day, I think I get asked a lot of the time, you know, how can you join the UX vocab club? So I, I want like a button, right? Join, mm-hmm. join the club. And then how, how the club can help. I say we, 
because I'm hoping eventually there's going to be more people helping me at the club but it, it, it is a group effort because I'm always talking with people you know what I mean that's why I said we okay. so because I don't really introduce myself right and I don't this isn't really about me because when I get asked questions it's usually people who are like hey I saw on your services you know you do cover letters or like hey like can you help me with my interview or like hey my last meeting totally sucked like why and I'm like okay let's talk you know so those are those are ideally the um like I you know how you can link to a position on the page I'd really like to use some like icons, which I just realized you can't export. Like, I don't know how to get it in color on. I can like, show you. You can show me. Okay, thank you. Because because these are all Google icons, right? So they all came in yeah. on. Yeah, okay. I'll, sh- I'll show it to you when we get to workflow. Sweet, sweet. Because <laughs> that's that was that was something, you know, like I want it to basically be like an arrow down or like an arrow up or something mm-hmm. like around somewhere where it's like, oh, you know, okay, find so out I more have... here. So it's just, it's super basic. And right now online, it's just what you see here on the Android small. I have a few questions. So first of all, um, the welcome to the UX vocab club, club. is this, um, is this an asset or this, this is text and this okay. is an image asset behind it. And actually I loaded okay. the image asset onto Webflow on a section and I guess it was like too big. So I didn't even like see or notice that I had it on that section as like the background image until I went down to like mobile and then like the tiny corner was peeking out and it's like, oh, wait, where did I, where did I even add this? <laughs> so I think it would be cool to have like a header section eventually for like different pages on the site where that is like the background image for that section. You know what I mean? So it's duplicatable, okay. but really it's, it's text and okay. in, in, in Webflow, it's an H1. That is, yeah, that is the main yeah. heading basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, so from the content perspective, then we've got, um, the second, uh, the second heading, which is how can we help? How can we help you? Mm-hmm. And then the next paragraphs are um, in function to the how can we help you, right? So yes. I can see that they are smaller. Yeah. Yep. So visually, this is what, even without reading it, this is what I get visually. So yeah, it Sweet. makes sense. Perfect. Um, That's good. And then we've got how much does the session cost? So it's another, uh, another section not related to how can we help you. Okay. Yep. So um, the main call to action, the main purpose of this page is to join your network on LinkedIn, right? Yeah, I think so. So up at the top, as you'll see, I have my icons up here because I was thinking like, what do I want people to even do from this page? <laughs> like, how does, how does the process work? You know, because I, I, I have an auto scheduling link, right? So book an appointment now. I have an email address that people can contact me. And oftentimes when people message me, I'll say, hey, you know, before we even meet, start a Google Doc, copy a few things down, right? Like share that document with me and then we can start there and we can start our conversation there. So that's like, I want, yeah. So right now, like this navigation bar does not exist on Webflow. So, uh, yeah, and so right sense. now the main thing is like join join the LinkedIn network because then, you know, they'll get all the updates and stuff like that. But there's the YouTube channel, you know? So I think that's why it'd be cool if I can get a page, like a really well-designed accessible page that then I can duplicate. So I can have, you know, different calls to action depending on which, which landing page it is, you know? So I think for this one, this particular page, it's this join, join the network and then at the bottom, I'm going to have email, email questions to Hillary. Okay. And like, yeah, so I don't really know. So th- this <laughs> Not makes sense. Your question. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> this, ma- this makes sense. And whenever you start thinking of the con- content and design of a page, um, one of the first things to think is uh, the, the main call to action because yeah. every page needs to have one main call to action and then the others are secondary. And the ones that you have um, in the navigation bar, those are static that will appear on every page. 
Yeah. And are in this case secondary to the main one. Okay. And I would also recommend to add the join our network um, on LinkedIn as a button. Up here. So, yeah, also in the navigation okay. bar. So okay. we, we haven't gotten to the footer if there yeah. is one, but no, there's no footer. There's oh. nothing. It just, okay. I mean, it just stops. It stops here. This is as far as I got. Okay. I don't like getting too far before I understand what I can duplicate. I'm a duplicator. So as soon as like a, a thing works, then I'm like, okay, I can take this section and I can do this thing. And then I can link it and do these, things. you know, like that, that makes more sense to me. So I didn't, I don't want it to be like an endless scroll situation. And yeah, and I, this is definitely step-by-step step because one of the things that I really, appreciate on some sites are the buttons that allow you to go back up to the top or back up to another section, you know, like are, are like a point, like a breaking point in, in the endless scroll that kind of help you navigate. So, so uh, the main call to action is join our network on LinkedIn. And yeah. you also have like a box with an icon next to it, which is the button because visually to me, this looked like disconnected. So um, it it doesn't it doesn't look really like a button to me, and I'm a bit confused which is the button. So okay, the that's icon fair. or the text. Because so what on... I yeah, what I recommend here to make a button, even with an with text and icon as you prefer, yeah. um, but to yeah to, to link this together instead well, of. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And when it actually went to Webflow this morning. Um, because I didn't know how to color the icons, I ditched the icon and I just put the text. And so it's only text on the button. So problem solved. <laughs> problem solved. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Cause, and, and that was just, this is cause for me, low, low fidelity means like where, um, well, where it's not perfect and like where we can have discussions like that, you know, yeah. and then how, how you see once it implements on web you're like oh okay like this wouldn't even work anyways like this works way better yeah as a button you know so I'm I don't not yeah I'm considering this from even if it's low fidelity I understand that but yeah in in my view low fidelity uh means that you need to focus more on the UX side so that was I'm focusing on, on right yeah because it's not disjointed the aspect of it so yeah I need to That's know so what so where, where should I click that's, yeah, exactly. And if I have to tab um, to tab through this page, uh, where will the tab stop from this? Yeah, design? that's 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 I don't know. I don't know. You know, like I was thinking, OK, so when you tab through, right, you start here and yeah. then it would tab through those three. Yeah. Right? And then the you're order. going to welcome. Then, um, right. When it's you, a heading. you tab through. So when you tab through, you go through the interactive elements. So mm -hmm. it might be buttons or um input fields or um, drop downs so it doesn't go to headings. Yeah. Typically screen readers have the option to go through the headings of a page, but when you use the keyboard to tab through, then you stop to interact with, on interactive elements. And then you click enter or um, space to, to activate that element. Um, let me add the site to this. Okay, tab I think, so that you can see what I believe we, we were ready to switch the webflow, right? Yeah. So because so, because basically I wanted it because like this is this is just this is what I've made in webflow. It's beautiful. It's so simple. Amazing. <laughs> but it, it does shrink down. It. So <laughs> it is responsive. Oh wait, wait, sorry, wait. I've got to put it back into um, this. Yeah. Can you can you open the webflow project? Uh yes. Because that would be much more useful. Your browser. And then we can also see how you can check the contrast, the color contrast even directly in Webflow. Yes. Okay, can you see it? Yeah. This is it. Okay. Da, 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 da. So I had my body, my title section, right? Cause that's what I'm hoping, I don't know, eventually I can put an image or something behind. I have, my so main this would be the hero section yeah okay yeah. so yeah you yeah you might name it the hero section okay so right. in terms of accessibility um well the first thing that i notice is the button which clearly does not have uh the contrast the proper contrast color and if you yeah. click on if you select the button 
and then go to the typography section on the right and then click color. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that the contrast ratio, uh, it says fail. Oh, it says fail right yeah. there. I never yeah. even saw that. Yeah. It's like the tiniest little red dot at the side yeah. of my screen. And if, you, and if you select that small, that little eye next to the 3.27, yeah, you see the these two lines appeared. And yeah. if you and if you grab that, um, that white circle, yeah, when you pass the first line, then you are in the double uh, in the double A compliance level. If you what? go even down, then you are in the triple A compliance level. So, oh my God! Yeah. But it, okay. it turns green as soon as you go um, right below the the first the first. Wow! Line. Oh my God! I'm scratching my nose. I'm so excited. That was so cool. <laughs> I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah. Please. Wait, I'm putting it right up to that line then. That's almost better than that other contrast checker because of these lines and like you can really get it as pink as possible. Obviously, if you if you think about the color contrast before you get into Webflow or into development in general, you you wouldn't waste time as you yeah. develop to yeah to also adjust the color contrast because that would be a disordered once you start building. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why I didn't want to get too far ahead on anything because I was like, <laughs> there's no point. <laughs> I need, you know, I wouldn't have even had a div okay. wrapper named. So this is, <laughs> this is very helpful. Okay, so I changed it. So at least now that button passes. But I wonder, if, yeah, okay, yeah. So what else? how- Oh, but this has to change too. Uh, this, yeah, we already discussed it. So you save the- you save the color for the button, I guess, so you can reuse it. No. Yeah, it did. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, double A. Oh, that's good. Okay, so because it does pass this, double A. Yeah, because this so, is a heading, it is large text, and it is bold. Yeah. And there's so, the cherry. Yeah, yeah, so the light pink work well in this case. Oh, look. I can get it even more pink. Okay, so saving that as D2. Why did they name it a color? Like, just give me the hex code. What the hell? Sorry. Okay, cool. Okay. Voila. Okay. So these were the main two elements that we already saw in, um, in Figma. But look, your button changed. The buttons, it's a button now. You know, yeah. does it look more like a button? Uh, we, you no? still need to think to, to work on it actually. So maybe make uh, uh, increase a bit the padding inside the button. I would also, um, the text inside the button is is a bit too, too, too long. And imagine too this. Too long? Imagine this in, on mobile. How I'm going to show it to you on mobile. One second. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. So wait, show how me. Much? <laughs> like padding like that on both, on both or like. Just... Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm not even doing it in this one. Damn. Oy for me, yeah, for me, it's still a bit hard to read. Yeah. The so, whole... so you're saying increase padding, decrease characters and maybe increase like boldness or something like use like a a, a, a weightier font so that uh, yeah. it's more centered and more uh okay i play around i play around with all all those that you mentioned and then see until until i get to something that that satisfies the visual the visual aspect and also the accessibility aspect yeah. So is there is there actually like a character limit that a button should be? Is it like 30 characters or something? Is there well, like a number? Um, well, typically a button needs to be like something uh, that you don't have to spend a lot of time reading it. So that's okay. why you use the content around it. And then there's the call, the call to action. Do you think join our network? Is that is that I shorter? Think it sweeter? makes a yeah. I think it makes sense. If you want to emphasize the UX professionals as a word, you might find other ways to play around yeah. with the content and emphasize yep. that uh, that part of the text. Yep. Uh, yep. But as part of, I don't see it necessarily as part of the of the button. See, one of the things that I struggle with 
uh, and I know we're about out of time here, but this is one of the things that I really struggle with. And that's part of the reason why I, I Nate, like I spelled out the button was because of, um, you know, what naming a link. So like when you name a link or like name a button, like it, it should be descriptive, right? Because of exactly what you were saying with the interactive elements, you know, if it just says, click this link, click this thing, click, click, like it, it can be kind of crazy. So with a button, I didn't know, you know, they're a screen reader isn't, or someone using tab isn't necessarily going to have read the context and content before the button. You know what I mean? So yeah. is there a way that like, sure, visually it may say that, but like when you're hearing it tabbing through or seeing it tabbing through, like it's, there's an alternative text, like an image would have an alt text. I mean, you can, if you want to emphasize the UX professional, you can use the page title. So when, when people that use screen readers um, get to a page, the first thing that they hear is the page title. So, the, and so you can where add, do I set that? Yeah, um, go um, so look at the left of your screen. You yeah. see there are the tabs, go to the page, which is the fourth tab, the page icon. Page, this one. That one, one. yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are the home page. Go to the settings of the home page. Set this yeah. here. Okay. That one, yeah. Yep. Oh, look at all of this stuff that's not filled out. That is okay. the title tag. Yeah. This is it. Okay, so you're saying that screen readers. Yeah. Yeah, so here you can welcome to, yeah, the community for Oops. professionals or whatever you want. So uh, once they have read that, they know it's a network, it's a community or whatever, so they can join. I wonder how many, how much I can write. Whatever. Um, there is, if you, if you want to know how much, how much you can write, you can hover over the question mark where there's a meta description and it usually says the number of characters that you can use. I characters. I think it's the limit. yeah, yeah. One fifty five <laughs> to three hundred. Nailed it. Good. Okay, but can I even style that? Like, if I, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. No, this is this is what appears when people Google your um, your site. Cool. Okay, and so this is or the same they, thing. Or when they share to uh, on social, when they share the link on social media, this is what they read. That's the open graph, right? That's yeah. the, okay. Oh, an open graph image the open URL. Graph is, it, the open graph is what they see when, um, when they share the link. So you can, you can set okay. it, you, you can set it as a different, a different text, or um, you can set it the same as the title tag and the meta description. So that there is, is so cool. Oh, oh, I have to save. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm, just, I have to I'm so used to auto save. Obviously, no, like I remember what, back in the day when like a Word document, like if you didn't save and you were there for yeah. four hours and it crashed, you were done. And now I'm like so used to auto saving that everything auto saves. Let's just see. Uh, that's so cool. Well, I mean, so things that I learned today, I can stop sharing, right? I mean, you don't have you don't have a complete page here. So what we no. saw in Figma was. Uh, like the more complete, the more complete idea of, you, of what you want to achieve. Um, especially, you didn't have the navigation, the navigation bar, which was yeah. important, um, important to check initially. But because anyway. I want the icons, because I want it to be icons, and so I'm gonna have to come back and you can show me how to, uh, yeah, how to change uh, the icons because yeah, I, I that was. Like that I was why because I, I really I didn't want it to fold into a, a hamburger menu. I wanted even when it was small, it to be like an icon that um, was still, you know, still visible. So that's interesting. This is so yeah, helpful. So when you use icons as buttons, uh, you also need to, so you don't, and you're not using a text as part of the button. You need to make sure that um, the area that you're using for that link is enough um, for people to distinguish and click on it, easily click yeah. on it and all, especially on mobile. Yeah. So yeah, even people that maybe have like um, tremors or yeah. that they cannot see very well, they cannot uh, uh, the fat finger. Um, yeah. <laughs> how is how's it called? It's the fat finger um, syndrome. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so um, in order for people not to get confused, you also need to 
consider all these aspects when you use buttons that yeah. um, with icons and um, it's important that in the as you will, you'll be using icons so it's going to in webflow it's an image element basically and it will yeah. require an on all text yeah so yeah. make sure that the old text um that the old text orients people what that button is about yeah yeah, so in that in that case, like Google provided basically alt task text by naming it, right? So it's like um, productivity increaser, but it's like that's not really what the button represents here. It's like connect on LinkedIn, right? So is that it should be that alternative text should be connect on LinkedIn. It should be descriptive of what the icon is. It should be of the action, the action, uh, yeah, of the action okay. because it is yeah part of the link. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. Oh my God. So, okay, I mean, so now cherry is my new color and <laughs> I have to go fix all of my assets. Yeah. So but, the, uh, yeah. So this was like an incomplete, um, incomplete review, but I mm. think it is also useful that you weren't that far with the yeah. development. Yeah. Uh, so you can even, if, so if you're going to create uh, other pages for your site, these are things that you need to consider uh, yeah. prior to getting into development. So. Exactly, exactly. Because I think if I had worked so long and so hard and doing all those things, it's focusing my attention in the wrong areas. You know, now I know, yeah. okay, like this is how you set up a web flow. Just this is how you name your div. Like this is how you differentiate, <laughs> you know? No, those are really important. Yeah. And, and I really appreciate you walking me through that. I, I sincerely, yeah. I, I worked my butt but off. But <laughs> no, but it, 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 it yes. is at the end of the day because how you set up your stuff matters, right? And just like what you're saying, yeah. right? Like if you're to so, pass it off to someone and it's a complete disaster, that's not accessible either. Accessibility isn't just, it doesn't just mean disability. I think it means like inclusivity and that means organization and structure and duplicating things and having discussions, you know? It's not, it's not just about screen readers and tab buttons. It's like, Half the time I don't, I like listening to things read to me. I, I hate using my eyes. Like I, you know, like yeah. it's just so annoying. So I think, I think this- Yeah, accessibility, it's, it's not just about disabled people because sometimes designers or developers makes, uh, make products or websites that are hard to use even for people who are completely uh, able. Yeah. So as you mentioned that it, uh, it's important to um, set up systems that are accessible yeah. um, from the beginning, uh, yeah. like the design system, that, yeah. like the small design system that you created in Figma, uh, that is the basic that, you, uh, that will help you um, be more creative also. Yeah, so, yeah, because yeah. in constraints, there's creativity, you know? If, if, if you can do anything, you're going to be sitting there thinking about everything. But if you're like, okay, this is the color I have. This is this is this icon I have. This is this button that I want to get out. This is my call. And you, you start creating constraints, then, you know, you have to make it look pretty and be accessible and be beautiful and interesting, right? So it's, I like that. I do, depends, I really like yeah. that. It really depends on perspective. To yeah. me, to me, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. constraints um make me feel safe okay not not, not limited so yeah. so that's i think this is also one of the reasons that i am so uh, driven towards systems and accessibility in general cool. so uh, yeah it's just a change of you know, mindset it's not yeah that, I don't say that's something that um as a as an obstacle right? yeah but if it is as a, a, on a team level and a company level how many things then you have yeah. to to change maybe you have like a whole design system that you've been using for years and you need to yeah. change everything so yeah obviously you have um people that might uh become like a pressure that might not be very welcoming um but it's just a matter of time and yeah and discussions right like just like coming at it from both sides i think a lot of if you can create empathy around why these changes are being made not just like for accessibility because unless if you've experienced some sort of inability accessibility doesn't really matter to people you know and until that's that's something that they can empathize with so i find like if if you can you know, share a video or like share like someone's actual experience 
trying to use the web page or trying, yeah, and you know, and then people are like, oh my God, I never thought that. I've never seen that before. And it's like, that's okay. And it still makes me think that as, as designers or content writers, not just designers, but as content writers like yourself, yeah. um, empathy is one of the first things that you learn when you decide to get into this, uh, into this field. So uh, why the resistance? Because no one likes change. It's hard. It's hard to not pick your favorite color and to make it not about you. You know, <laughs> I want it to be about me. I want it to always be about me, but it's, that's not the case. And I've been on the other side when, you know, everything falls through and nothing is working as you would have expected it. And it's just like, like when I broke my leg, I was in a wheelchair and the doors at my design school, the doors, the button to push the door to open was behind the hinge. So I pushed the door and get smacked in the face, Mark. push the button, smack in the face with the door. And I was like, this, this is accessibility. And the Dean was like, you, um, you should, you should share this. Like you should share your experience and write a book. And I was so angry at the time because nothing was working. Cause I, you was know, it, I had like cognitive, there? cognitive learning disability plus a physical disability broke the education system and they were like sorry we can no longer support you goodbye yeah. and I was like okay that's fair so I'm gonna figure all of this out now and like it so that to me created this like huge fire and that's why I think when I see something that is so you know the color contraster clearly that doesn't work that's like a button with a door smack in the face. I think that's why I can, I have that mindset of like, okay, it's not working. I'm changing it. I don't, it doesn't matter if I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. That has yeah. nothing to do with it, you know? So I think I'm lucky in that way. Not lucky that like I experienced that, but like it's, it's. It gave you perspective. So, um, but that's, that is also the reason that I think it's important to be, uh, to raise our voices yeah. When it comes to, even even though most of the times uh, most it falls on deaf ears, but um, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't we matter. have a speech to text so they can read about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use yeah, we're doing YouTube videos now, yeah, we're writing blog posts, yeah, uh, social well, media, so yeah. We'll be loud, loud and proud about it. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. I've been talking about this for the past two weeks. Like I'm, I'm just so excited and I'm definitely going to book another session with you when I'm further along implementing yeah. these changes and have, you know, my nav bar. I'd like to break my navigation bar with you at some point. I think that would be really fun. So <laughs> Definitely. So we cool. might tackle some other accessibility topics here. It is a long road. It's a long road, but we're going to get the systems in place, right? Like yeah. this all started because your clonable was so it. easy, right? To like break apart and be like, okay, so these are the components. This is what I'm thinking about. This is, this is REM. Got it. Okay. And then like moving that into Webflow, that transition, yeah. you know, that was my first, that was my literally first time. So cool great, super easy, not a big deal. And now that I know that, you know, being able to have that foundation and then start building on it. And I'm going to find that, that div, that number indexing thing that I, I read. It was yeah, yeah, you on a deep dive. I need to, I need to send that. it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hillary, for, um, for this session today. And we'll see, uh, we'll, I will see. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, I refer to myself. Enjoy. the royal we yeah. <laughs> it's fine yes I will, yeah. I will see you soon yeah no that was amazing Morella thank you so much I really appreciate that and uh, thank you thank you thank everybody you. thank you Yay, for being accessibility. Here. <laughs> and yeah we're always here for accessibility yeah. always always okay. bye Hillary see you in the next bye. session bye bye